pricing. What is value? Who determines the value? I look at all these used posts, right? And I find it very interesting because I'm looking for a new phone. I mean, this is my wife's iPhone. They work a lot better, but I'm just not going to go iPhone for now. So I'm looking for a new phone and I look at all these places. Well, wow, this one is a lot cheaper. And you say, oh, it's the worst. It just has a crack. The whole screen's cracked. But he's selling it for a lot cheaper, right? I mean, I find it ridiculous that he's still selling for 200 bucks when it's cracked. Or sometimes people are selling these blacklisted phones. You can't even register them because they've been reported stolen or they missed payments or blah, blah, blah. But they're cheaper. And that's because people understand value. It's dropped in value, right? We know when you drive that car off a dealership, it's not new anymore. And thus it drops in value. I guess the past few years pandemic, a little bit different, right? Because you can't find it available new. But in a traditional sense, once you buy it, it's not new anymore. But the irony is for cars, it's not the first, you're not the first one who drove it. There's people who test drove it. Plus they have to drive it here, right? I mean, there's a few miles on there already. It's not new. But yes, I think it's new, because you bought it. And I feel that's the very interesting thing, right? Is value something magical and mystical, right? Because we buy it from a store and it's new, and thus we pay more. But if we buy it from a, you know, just some random guy on the street, right? It's new, but not the same level of new, right? Because it may have been open, may have not. But in the store, it's the same thing. Your shoes could have been tried on already. They're not new, right? They've been worn around the store. How is that new? But I think with value is more valuable things may actually become less valuable and less valuable things may become more valuable. So think about tech. It starts out that you have this cool piece of technology, right? But then it gets superseded by something else and now the value drops. So for example, mopping. Do you know there's a brand called Ocedar that sells mops and these canisters where you step on it and it spins it for a lot of money, like 40, 50 bucks for a mop and a thing to dry and wring it out. Which seems crazy because who still mops, right? But I guess now with hardwood floors and stuff that is getting more popular. But I didn't want to go that route because I just don't like it. So I was looking for used, cheaper ones, for example, for that. And they really don't go much cheaper, right? Even used ones, they're selling for 10 bucks. You're like, just give it away, right? So I look for, maybe I could get a steam mop, you know, the ones that plug in and stuff. Well, those are pretty cheap used, 20 bucks, 30 bucks. And they cost a lot more new, like 100 bucks. They really depreciate it. Some of them are still new, basically. The people barely use them or didn't use them at all. And that's because they have technology. That's because they have electricity. But mechanical stuff, it maintains value pretty well, it seems. And that's the funny thing, right? So you look at stuff like, say, in the computer world, there's all this memory for servers. Servers use a lot of memory. And these special ones called ECC error correcting. They also have different ones like RAM bus rims and stuff like that. But the thing is, if you use a special memory, you can't use it in your normal computer. You can't handle that extra memory correcting bit. And theirs, they could probably use actually regular, but that's the whole point. They want to have more reliable memory for their server. And so these server memories used are really cheap. So new, right, server memory is more expensive. Used is even cheaper. And that's because the market for it's not there. And so the whole supply and demand determining value, right? And the thing is, a lot of the time we understand this is a time component as well. Your phone right now is worth a amount, but after a few months or a year, it's worth less because there's been a new model. Who wants the old model? I mean, people do, they just won't pay as much for, right? And that's the funny thing, right? For cars, we look at it that sometimes when it gets older, it's cheaper until it gets really old and then it gets more expensive, right? It's sort of a weird shape of the curve. And the thing is, value is in looks, right? And we say, well, there's a simple fact of how your car looks, right? Everybody wants a cleaner, nicer looking car, right? It shows it's been well maintained, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's not true, right? It could have been repaired at a body shop, but they plan to put in the money. But looks matter, right? You don't want to be driving a junky beat up car if you have the money and the means to avoid it. But the thing is, looks also matter when you're selling, right? Like vodka, put in a nice bottle, price goes up. It's the same thing. 
Why did it go up or not, right? It doesn't make any sense, but that's the way it works. And I found a very interesting th thing to me is value is in the eye of the beholder, value is in the eye of the seller. And sometimes their values meet, and sometimes they don't. But the thing is, there's things you could do to help them meet, right? So companies do this all the time, because you may not think this is worth it, but then you see that ad that Apple made that's gorgeous. You're like, I gotta have it. $1,000, I, I gotta have it, right? So they change you. You and them were a little bit far apart what the definition of value was, but now you're in agreement because they pulled you up to theirs, right? And in the same way, I realized when I'm contacting people selling stuff, right? You can just lowball them, give them a lower price. Some people might like it, some people don't, right? They just want to get rid of it, they'll say yes. But they probably would have just given it away for free. Or maybe they had it sitting around and they listed it six months ago, they still have it, sure, you can have it for free. But many times people don't like it when you give them a low price. But if you have them check them up and have some things and have a reason, then they can accept it, right? And that's how you get your valuation and their valuation to also be closer. It's just sort of looking from the opposite direction, right? Because usually in our world as a consumer, the companies do that to get us closer, right? To their valuation, so we'll buy the product. But in this case, we're getting a seller closer. They're an individual private party as well, and we're hacking with them, right? And I remember in Hong Kong when we went to a market because they're supposed to haggle, one of my classmates just said, okay, I'll pay eight bucks for that. And I was like, oh, well, you know, that's really good. And she just walked away. And then the person thought, eh, come back, come back, I'll give it to you. The person was really happy, the seller. She bought it. It's an unhappy transaction. Why? Because there's this process. Their values didn't coincide. But the seller said, well, you know, I don't agree with that. You didn't get me to it gradually, but I, I do see your point and I'm gonna come down because I wanna make a buff, right? And I feel that's a very interesting thing. So much in life, like value, is not absolute, right? But it's mind games, it's communication, it's, you know, a negotiation. And that's one thing I learned recently with buying you stuff and selling you stuff, not really selling stuff, I give more stuff away. I mean, because one person is just, giving away the open diapers, the unopened ones that's going to try to sell. And then this person says, I'm in the financial, you know, difficulties and I just, you know, discover we're going to have a baby. So it would really help me out if it's like, oh, you know, why don't we just give them all the rest? I don't need it anyways. I don't need the money. And that's also value, right? A good feeling. That's why GoFundMe is so popular. Value. The term is very broad. Our understanding is very narrow we should broaden it and come to realize we'll work with other people on understanding each other's value and come to a same agreement on what is the value of something.